uh, I'm not as excited in the morning anymore. I don't say the good morning traders and investors. Well, I'm back. Good morning, traders and investors. Friday, happy Friday, everybody. Let's get this party started, shall we? All right, let's move this over here. Let's share the screen. Brian, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, and good morning. Let me go ahead and uh, share my screen. Otherwise, uh, you'll be looking at my mug the entire time. It's not going to be as beneficial. Hope everybody's doing well. David, good morning. You guys are, are nice and early. I, I love that. Love it. Let me uh, post this into YouTube. I mean, into our uh, Telegram channel. Get everybody else to come in here too. Okay, good. There we go. Gaston, Dr. Serena, Sergey. Good morning. Oh, good. You made money on Wells Fargo. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, good morning, Cam. We will we will be today at um at noon in uh in your program. And by the way, folks, remember customer service live. And I will have my VIP room today at 11 a.m. And Graham is going line with his uh Bitcoin crypto halving at noon. That that should be interesting. So uh, he's he's had a hundred percent return on investment on over the last six months. So highly highly recommend you check it out. Also, there's not as much correlation with cryptos as there is with other stocks. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. If you guys are in, and I'm I'm just throwing this out. If you guys are in the weekly cash flow uh, program, Matt and I are working up a rotation to rotate and and uh, get out of the current Microsoft and rotate into a new position, okay? We're gonna do that this morning before anybody gets clipped and the assignments start, usually they start second half of the day because there's still traders trading Friday expiration, lottery trades, that sort of thing. So we, usually what happens is there's a um, a key off of, a key off of uh, when, when the premiums, when there's no more premium in the option, that's when the option gets exercised. So we're gonna be doing that this morning, probably about five, 10, 15 minutes into the opening bell. So if you're in the weekly cash flow, Look for uh, look for an alert early in the morning today, or you know, pretty close after the market opens, so that we can uh, exercise, we can execute a new trade on Microsoft. Okay, so just letting you guys all know that if you're in that program, I haven't received any emails. I'm just giving you guys a heads up, and it's Friday, Friday, Friday. Yes, we closed out two trades yesterday in the um, uh, in the pit. We closed out uh, Wells Fargo, and we closed out. Uh, what was the other one? Google, Google as well. Richard says, good morning. You have been a great help in my trading. I have learned to use the VIX. Good, 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 good. Leonard says, I'm waiting. Taryn says, I got out of Microsoft yesterday. Okay, good, good for you. Good, 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 good. All right, so let's start. So first things first, uh, we had news last night and I need to talk about this news because this news is very important to uh, actually what we're talking about today. We had news on Netflix yesterday. And the news on Netflix, what I was hoping was was that the news on Netflix, if you look at if you if you look at news on Fang stocks, about eight out of ten times they beat earnings expectations and the numbers are really, really good. It didn't uh, it didn't um, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Mike uh, Netflix did not did not have a move, okay? So that that really really screwed the pooch this morning because that Netflix is down six percent. By the way, I don't know if you guys remember or not, but um, well, actually, you don't have to remember. I'll show you right now. So remember, there's a lesson here. Remember Netflix? We were expecting eight point eight percent move, and I told you I think that's a little too high. I said this yesterday. I said I don't think I think net. Again, I'm not trying to say I told you so, and you you, you didn't miss a trade or anything like that. There was no trade. Just listen to the logic here or, and why you should be paying attention and how useful this is. So remember, we were looking at Netflix. We saw this number yesterday, and I told you yesterday that um, I think this is a little too much. I said uh, something to the effect that Net Netflix is a over $500 stock, and I don't think we're going to see a 50-point move in the or $600 stock. I don't think we're going to see a 50-point move. So look at this. Netflix is is down 6.8 percent. Okay, just let's just say six percent. Okay, the 
implied volatility as priced into the options was pricing in 8.8%. So in theory, uh, in theory, if you were to do a, if you were to sell a straddle on Netflix, okay, uh, and you would you would collect 8.8% premium, you would only have to give back this morning at the open, assuming the, that it's going to be, you would only have to give away 6.3% of that. So you would be able to pocket about 2% of that. 2% of uh two per, two per, two percent of a six hundred dollar move is about 10, 12 points. So just wanted to show you how you could use this. So if you thought Netflix was gonna be, if you thought that Netflix was gonna be a 15 point move, you'd be buying the straddle or a strangle. In this case, a straddle. If you but if you think that's too much, and I thought it was too much, you would sell it. Okay. So a lot of folks ask me, well, how do you use this in practical ways? Well, they were expecting 8.8. They got 6.4. Again, I'm just reading this, whatever this is, but you see 6. Point whatever is less than 8.8. So you would make money on that trade. Let's just let me show you another one so you could see what I'm talking about. Let's do Taiwan Semiconductor. They were expecting 6.7, okay? And let's see what they got. They only got 1.85. Okay, so think about this. Okay, the option was pricing in almost seven percent. Okay, a move, almost seven percent move, and they got less than two percent. Okay, so whoever sold the straddle is going to come out like a bandit on a good four percent move this morning. Do you, do you guys now understand how to use this number and why it's so valuable? So, for example, so for example, today you can't, you can, you. You could do this today, but it's going to affect on Monday. You look at these and ask yourself, hey, am I expecting a 6% move on AXP? Good morning, Wayne. Am I am I expecting a, 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 a American Express? Am I expecting that much of a move? So I'm just, again, I'm just pointing it out to you. It's already down 2.2%. So, and I think that already came out pre-open. I think it already came out pre-open. Uh, before the opening. Yeah, American Express. So it already came out. So here we were expecting three, we were expecting 5.8% on American Express. We got 2.2%. Okay. So so my point, my my point is you should look at these and this, the numbers will make you decide <clears throat> based on your analysis if you think it's too much or too little. And that's how you take advantage of strangle. That's how you know whether you should be going long or going short, a straddle or a strangle, okay? Ooh, Cam says, Tesla recalls all cyber trucks on sticky accelerator issues. No, not good for Amex. I'm not even, you know, uh, Adam, you're right. And I wasn't even, I was so focused on the spread, but you're right. It's not good for, <laughs> you're right. This isn't good for Amex. You're very good point. Or Microsoft, or uh, uh, MasterCard or Visa. Uh, but again, I wanted to show you how this works. Now, so uh, Taiwan Semiconductor didn't do us any favors. Netflix didn't do us any favors. What about BX? What about Blackstone? Blackstone didn't do us any favors. So all the earnings yesterday, all the big earnings, well, pretty much all the big earnings yesterday. Let me just look at the last one, ISRG. All the big earnings yesterday. Oh, this one did well. So they got 2.92%. Let's see what they were expecting. They were expecting 6.6. .6. Moondog is in the house. Blue Net says, where do you find the percentage move? Well, that's a great question, Blue Net. I've showed you several times. I've showed it. I did it yesterday. Um, Moon, um, no, it wasn't Blue Net. I did it yesterday in the VIP room. I'll do it again in the VIP room today. Again, it happens at 11 a.m. I'll show you how I find these. Uh, it's very easy. It's a three-step process. Um, but the best way, just follow what I do. I post you the highest ones every week. Look, I gave you guys this on Monday. So you could see what's priced into the mar into the stock based on its earnings. And then you could, you could say, hey, well, I think it's going to be more or I think it's going to be less. So... Um, but but that's what I wanted. Shouldn't you wait until after the market opens to determine the move? Um, Terrence, that's a good question. I should, but the problem is the market's not open, and I'm not trying. I'm trying to demonstrate. I'm not trying to get you guys into a trade. 
So you're absolutely right, Terrence, if we were placing trades, but we're not placing trades. I'm trying to educate you and show you how to use this. Does that make sense? But yes, you're 100% correct. Yes, yes. To, to, to Yes, I should wait till the market opens. Generally speaking, you're not going to see a, a move go from 5% to 1% uh, after the market opens. It just doesn't work that way. So usually the move is, is, is where it's going to be. But you're right. You're right. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of the market being open right now. Okay, Terrence? But that's a fair statement. But how the hell do I know where the market's going to open? I, I, I don't know. So again, I'm only showing you this based on the demonstration. But I could promise you, I could guarantee you that ISRG is not going to go from 2% to 6% in the next hour and a half. Or or Netflix is Netflix may go from 65 to 8%. That's possible. But semiconductor is not going to go from 2% to 6.7%. So it's a good question. It's a fair question. But it it just doesn't it it it, it you gotta you know you gotta look at it uh, you, you gotta look at it with a grain of salt. Okay, volatility. Remember what I said I was looking for. And I'll get into all the global turmoil. We've only been here ten minutes. So volatility. What did I tell you yesterday? Volatility was going lower. I wasn't feeling any fear in the market. Why? Because volatility was going lower. What happened overnight? We spiked. When did I draw this line? A long time ago. Look at this level right here. The next major level for volatility is right around the current level, just a little bit higher. Um, we tend to we tend to peak out around here unless there's something really, really happening in the world. So I'm expecting volatility to come up here. The only issue is it could stay here. It can come up here, come down. It could stay here for about a week or so, a week, two weeks sometimes. Usually volatility. Now, here's something you, that, that will be helpful to you. Usually volatility... Uh, is mean reverting very, very fast. And remember, volatility spikes on fear. Fear is a very strong and a very, very power, excuse me, very powerful emotion. Uh, yes, Kirk, it is. It is it's built into the option every day. But you need to pick the option that ex the closest option expiration after earnings. In our case today, you've got options expiring today in the afternoon, and the premium is for these. so they're they're very accurate. That's another good question. I'll talk about this more in the VIP room today. So volatility is now uh, off the charts, as you could see here. And this is definitely, definitely not a time to start uh, to start picking lows on your favorite stock. This is a time to kind of just let it sit back or trade to the short side. There are not that many long picks. I think yesterday we traded, ironically, yesterday we traded like the top 10 stocks. We traded Google and we traded uh, Wells Fargo, but my long list was very, very, very short. Fortunately, we made money on both of them. Keep your eye on volatility; it's stagnating. Bond market, bonds are start. Remember, I told you I think bonds are going to start are going to come up here to this level and then they're going to come back down. So bonds are filling in the gap. Why are bonds going up? Why are bonds going up? They're not going bond up because of the Fed. They're going up because investors are taking money out of stocks and putting them into the bond market. That's known as flight to quality. If you see a non-fear-based environment and you see the bond market dropping just based on everyday trading action, that's natural selling pressure. But when you see the stock market coming down and you see this, that's a flight to quality. This is equivalent to what you're seeing the volatility right now. So um, always separate the reason why bonds are going down. If you see volatility spiking and you see bonds going up, that's not that uncommon. That's just flight to quality, okay? That's not major selling pressure. That's just what it is, okay? Um, that's number one. Number two, energy prices. Now, let's talk a little bit about energy prices. Maybe you guys can help me out here. We just had some crap happen in the Middle East, right? Why are energy, why are, why is crude oil prices down? Did they rally into, let me see if they even rallied last night. Let me just see something here. Now, see here, uh, recover early losses on lingering geopolitical fears. I don't know. They still look like they have pretty pretty uh, big losses there. That's right. That's right, Adam. So to me, to me, look at it. It looks like they, they rallied. They rallied. Here's April 19th. They rallied a little bit, but they've been going down. So, to, so I'm a little confused. I'm a little confused what's going on right now. This is not normal. And typically when you don't get a normal response uh, in a typical scenario – that means that's usually priced in. So the fact that we're not responding to energy prices and the fact that volatility 
is close to here, it means it means to me that that whatever we're whatever we're assessing is is more than not priced in. Uh, futures prices rolled Tuesday, but wasn't that bad. Good, 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 good. So again, again, be careful, be careful. Usually, when you see heightened volatility and you see uh, crude oil and and look at gold. By the way, look at gold. Um, where's my gold? Gold is also down. So everything is down. Everything is down. I wonder if cryptos are down. So we have to be very, very careful. Yeah, the news response was minor, but still, there's there's turmoil. But this is very strange. You would think you would think that energy, you would think that if volatility is up, energies are up, and you would think gold would be up. So the fact that gold is up is just very. I mean, the fact that gold isn't up and energies are not up when the market's down is is pretty significant. But uh, if you were to take a look at vol, where was that? Where's that volatility? Volatility. Just wanted to show you something. Here's the here's the problem. Remember, I said volatility peaks around the current level, that twenty one level. Look at what happened overnight. You're going straight down, straight down. So sometimes when these things happen, it's um, and Bitcoin is up because flight to quality because investors don't want to because nothing else is going up right now except volatility in Bitcoin. So it's actually a pretty good um, safety haven. And by the way, Graham is doing a class today at noon on cryptos, um, and uh, I'm going to be doing VIP room at 11 a.m. So make sure to join there. All right, let's talk a little bit about global economy, okay? Hey, look at this. My uh, highlighter is working. So worries over uh, conflict escalating in the Middle East weighted on sentiment, although volatility is now at the lowest level it's been all night. So we could have uh, some degree of a reversal today. Let me just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the index after I do this, but I want to look at intraday action overnight. Uh, ABC reported Friday day at uh, Israel launch retali retaliatory strike against Iran. Uh, later confirmation of strike were reported by Wall Street Journal. Semi-official uh, FARS news agency reported ex explosion near Isfahan early Friday, where the country has nuclear facilities and a drone factory. State television conveyed nuclear facility in the city completely safe. So, and the truth is, we really aren't going to know what happens uh, till Netflix slumped over six percent. So, since the news came out. So somebody asked me, how will it change between now and the market opens? So overnight, it went from six to six and a half percent over the last 12 hours. So the, these numbers are pretty, you know, they're slightly different than the opening, obviously, but we don't have the opening. So what can I work with? Tesla, by the way, notice the, my, I have a bold highlighter. It's pretty cool. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. Yeah, they would not respond to attack. Good, good, Jim. So Netflix slumped. Tesla, how long have I been telling you to stay away from this stock? I don't know why people still keep sending me emails all the time, but uh, should we buy more Tesla? Should we? Buy, why are you sending me emails? I keep telling you it, it's a crappy stock. And I've been right. Every, it's been just going down. Stay away from this thing. Stay away from this thing. Uh, economic data showed that uh, Fed manufacturing activity rose to a two-year high. You see, and that's the problem. You've got a lot of contradictory news right now. Uh, chip companies are doing well. Crap in the Middle East. We got the elections coming up, which is too much stuff. And then you've got the feds confusing that poor little dense kid with the bike. Uh, you know? Um, I think I think Tesla would rally if Elon steps down. But I don't think he's stepping down. I think his ego is too big. If he because funds will start buying it, you see? You see, Gaston, one of the biggest reasons why folks stay away from Tesla is because it's unpredictable, because you don't know when he's going to open up his big mouth. So a lot of funds just stay away from it for that reason. It's just very, very uh, good. Good, Dr. Serene. It's just very, uh, it's very, it's how do you, how do you trade a stock when the owner opens up his big mouth randomly? And sometimes he says good things and bad. Um uh, there you go, Moondog. Moondog's got it, the idea. So President Williams, this is, th this is the mom and dad talking to the kid. Remember that. He said, there's no urgency to get you that bike, stating that uh, uh, your dad's salary will determine when you're going to get that bike. Uh, he says dad's not doing bad financially, but uh, his boss is not ready to give him a raise just yet. And uh, he's like, uh, if data's telling us that we would need... Uh, uh, for you to wait before you get that bike longer, you're going to wait. 
That's what mom said. Let's see what dad says. <laughs> uh, dad says he's comfortable not getting the bike for the kid this year. He believes that uh, it would be appropriate uh, maybe maybe at the end of the year to get him that bike because the bo things at work are just not that great. Uh, so he's very comfortable being patient and uh, the kid's tantrums are not going to uh, influence him. The aunt and the uncle come in. Here's what the aunt and the uncle say. Uh, central That uh, we're not going to get him that bike this year. We need to wait and see uh, how long it's going to take for daddy to get that raise. So does any of these sound like the kids getting that bike? Meanwhile, there's a 19% chance <laughs> probability that it's going to happen in the summer. And this was at 12. Now it's at 19 again. I think this should beat about 10%, 5%, 10 to 5%. That kid ain't getting that bike. Uh, a lot of folks asking about Tesla. No, no, can't, Tesla can't be bought for long term. Why do you all want to keep buying Tesla? This is the third, fourth time in the last two weeks I keep telling. This is what I'm talking about. Let me ask you guys. Is there anybody there telling you to uh, look? I don't know. Maybe there's somebody else out there that like contradicts me. Is there anybody out there telling you to buy Tesla? Who would be stupid to buy Tesla when it's going down like that? Come on. Let, let's be real here. All right, Europe, I'm getting too carried away with my Tesla. Every other day, I tell you to stay away from Tesla, and people still keep asking me, should I buy Tesla? Don't pick bottoms and don't buy Tesla. Buy Tesla when everything is perfect and when the stock is doing this. The stock is doing this. That's not a time to buy anything. That's a time to run away. Europe is down, not giving us any tailwind, um, obviously because of the Middle East tension. Retail industrial construction stocks underperformed. Uh, Reuters said the German government plans to increase its annual growth forecast. This is very, very good. This is very good for Germany and Europe. They may be lowering their rates before us. China closed lower. No tailwind from China. Tracking uh, Asian markets overnight. Low risk off sentiment following Israel retaliatory attack. Consumer service stocks led the decline. Semiconductor stock retreated. It's just not pretty out there. They are programmed for on Tesla. What you, they are programmed on Tesla. I, I don't know what you mean, J Jamaican. Yeah, it, maybe you can explain what you mean. Programmed, programmed. I don't know. I don't know. All I've been, I I couldn't be, I couldn't be clearer than than I've been on Tesla, and I've been explaining to you why and how, showing you levels, showing you that channel. I mean, we've been at it every single day almost. You know, uh, sit on our hands and wait for the best timing and the best trade setups. Exactly. The same people that buy iPhones and Beanie Babies. <laughs> Ooh, not good. Uh, Japan closed sharply lower. Do you guys see that? We're not getting any global tailwind experiencing its largest percentage drop since September of 2022. Now, I wouldn't think that Japan would be as impacted by, by Israel. So I think there's something more to it than that, okay? Seriously, seriously. Um, technology and chip-related stocks led the decline. The Japanese government bond yield fell sharply while the yen advanced as the escalation in the Middle East. Why is Japan impacted so much by the Middle East? I'm curious. I'm very curious. They don't have a big... They don't have a big energy. Interesting. I'm going to have to do some analysis there. There's something to this. Uh, Roger's advice and good Jamaicans there. They are programmed on Tesla because I said I'd never go against Roger's advice. And Jamaican Star said they are. Well, listen. If anybody reads a, a, a publication called the Jamaican Star, what is the Jamaican Star? I've never even heard of the Jamaican Star. I don't know. Maybe I should check out the Jamaican Star. Um, as far as news, we've already talked about Netflix. We've talked about ISR. Uh, KB Homes advanced. This may be good for home builders. Keep an eye on home builders today. Shopify rose. This is good for uh, consumer state, uh, consumer discretionary stocks. Keep your eye on Amazon uh, today. Yes, keep your eye on Amazon. This is very good for Amazon. Uh, Ulta Beauty. Remember, we shorted this stock, and uh, uh, it didn't make us beautiful, but it made us a little wealthier. <laughs> And don't forget, folks, uh, customer service live from 10 to 1 p.m. And I will be there at noon today. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, oh, it's a person. Jam 
Jamaican J- Jamaican star is a person? Never. I don't even know who that is. I gotta have to. I gotta figure out this. Uh, uh, I gotta figure out Jamaican star. I gotta gotta figure that out. All right. Let's talk about technicals. Okay. First off, how are the sectors doing? Let's look at sectors. I don't want. I know it's Friday. I don't want to keep you guys here forever, but I'm having a pretty good time. Uh, 90 day high, 19 to 142. You could see there's not a lot of stocks, and most of these are inverse or just inverse ETFs. There's not a lot of meat on the bones here, but I will talk about my favorite ones. Uh, Nina, look above in the chat. Uh, anyways, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Um, sectors, sectors, sectors. How are sectors doing? Let's take a look. Okay, utilities, consumer staples. Okay, so far so good. The Dow, okay, okay, no problem there. Healthcare, financial material. So far, I have no problem with this at all. Okay, at all. Here's where the problem begins. We got to get communication out of here. And we will, if today has a shitty day on, on tech, it will. And then you have industrial. So one, two, three, four, five, six, a little... Uh, uh, flying the ointment here, but then you've got industrial, then you've got S&P 500, then you've got retail and home builders. Okay, why is energy here, not here? But then you've got mid caps and Russell 2000, consumer discretionary, uh, Invesco, technology. Honestly, look at this. You've got semiconductors here. You've got technology here. You've got QQQ here. You've got consumer discretionary. You've got Russell 2000 and mid caps. The only thing, the only two things I would change is I would take communication services out of here and put it somewhere here. And then I would take um, industrial and switch. Actually, I wouldn't even do anything. I would just take communication services out of here. And then we're 90% good. I'm in rare form today. (laughs) It's Friday. It's Friday. So my point is, do you see how as the market goes down, they, they're not nearly as much out of whack. The, the, the salad is going away. I was hoping there was a better way to demonstrate this to you, but as the salad, as we, and you'll see, if we really, really dump, if we if Google and Meta dump, bye-bye communication services, that'll come down here, industrial will stay up here, and for the most part, this will be kosher. Uh, hey, should I buy... <laughs> I mean, how many times? So the fact that Russell and mid-caps are close to each other, the fact that they're near the speculative sector, the fact that the only thing here, real estate, but real estate has been very sensitive due to interest rates. So I could see how that's towards the lower end. But this isn't looking all that bad. This isn't looking, this isn't all that bad. Remember like two weeks ago, it was like tech, uh, industrial, uh, semiconductors, uh, Russell 2000, consumer staple. It's not like that anymore. You've got a clean blue chips right here. It's clear that blue chips are leading, defensive stocks are leading, and speculative stocks are over here. So just again, we're we're definitely seeing that. All right, let's do some analysis. And this is the part I was, I was uh, trying to avoid because I'm gonna have to draw some new lines. I don't like drawing lines. I think I flunked uh, art in school. All right. So remember these pesky lines? We're, we're, bro- we're going out right now. We're going on the macro view. Uh, we're breaking down. We've already filled this gap. And if you look at it on a shorter term basis, now here's what's interesting. We broke below this level yesterday. Remember I told you guys, watch this level. We stayed there pretty good all the way till the closing bell. And then after the closing bell, we came down here. And then we started coming up. So we could be seeing a reversal, although let me just see something real quick. See, here's the thing. And and folks, look overnight what happened. We gapped down and we've been going straight up. Look at volatility overnight. Look at volatility overnight. Look at volatility overnight. And again, look at the stock market overnight. Stocks are going higher. So whatever happened, the worst appears to be behind us and we're looking to shake out. Let me look and see how Netflix has been doing overnight. I'm going a little fast today, but uh, I want to see if you guys know. No soup for Netflix. So tech is going to be under fire. 
But this is very positive that we're coming off of these levels. So we're going to be back in this area, back in the 499 area. I'll create more levels later on in the week or over the weekend, but keep your eye again on the 499 or the 500 level and the 505 level, roughly speaking. Okay, keep your uh, keep your keep your eye on these levels right here, 500, 505, QQQ. I think we're way past that on the QQQ, but let's see. QQQ overnight. Also, same thing. Gap down, up, 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 up. Possibly, Jim. I don't think so because of tech, but we could see. I mean, I'm uh, I'm positioning myself for a two-sided market right now. So it makes no difference. I like two-sided markets. We can go long and short. So as far as NASDAQ is concerned, we are below the level. We are now coming up to a major, major support level here. Let me just draw this right here. Let me just do this right here. So you could see we're bouncing off of this level. So the levels on the NASDAQ you want to watch is 425 and 421. If we can get above 425, it would go a long ways to showing us good faith. Yeah, my thesis is still firm. Absolutely. We have to go above 505. Yes, Adam, this level right here. We got to go above 505. Nothing changed. We've got to go above this level, and we can't, we haven't been able to all week. I'm dropping all week, so we need to get above this level. If we don't get above this level, nothing good's going to happen. All right, on the Dow, and I I try to show you the, this during the day, and I'm hoping that it's helpful. Again, I'm not going to go lower because I'm hoping we're going to go higher. But notice how we stuck at this level right here, about thirty seven thousand eight hundred. Gold color level. This is the this is the two hundred day moving average. It's not effective right now. It's only effective on daily data. We're looking at sixty minutes data. It just happens to be here because I have it right here. But so again, we we've, we've been right around here overnight. So my 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 big concern is: Are we going to go above thirty seven thousand eight hundred and twenty, or or are we going to stay there? I'm hoping that this is the bottom. The worst is already out. Uh, the market is not reacting to the Middle East, okay? It's not reacting to the Middle East. Uh, crude oil is out, it's down. Volatility has been going down all night. The market's been rallying, okay? So that's where we're at right now. All right, I gave you all the goodies. So keep. So here's what my your job for today is. You're going to keep an eye on volatility. If you see volatility, this is the 60-minute chart on volatility, VIX, or you could use VXX. If you see volatility keep going down into this area right here, and if you see the SPY, I'm, tr tr I'm so glad we're doing this before the opening bell. It gives you guys a real good sense. Have you guys been benefiting from me doing this live in the morning? Or is, is the VIP room enough for you guys? Let me know. And I'm hoping that we're going to start coming back up towards the five, that 505 level. All right. That's what, I'm, uh, that's what I'm really hoping for. All right. Let's look at some stocks for today. I don't have a, long a huge long list. Mar Marina, good morning to you. Hope you're okay. AEM. And, and you know what? Just because we're here, I'll give you guys uh, some Tesla levels as well. So this the gold miners still look good. Okay, good. Work to wonder. Good, good. Pre-flight planning. Good, 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 good. All right, all right, all right. Good. I'm glad you guys are uh, liking them. Oh, thank you, Cam. You're very, very sweet. Uh, a morning is a must. No, it's absolutely beneficial. All right. Well, I'm glad we're not wasting our time. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Good. I'm glad it adds. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to be repetitive. So we're breaking out of Eagle Miners. Uh, my stop would be around this area. I like the stock. I do. I still like the stock. Um, I'd like to see a little more momentum, but there's not that many longs on the table right now. I still like DBA. Uh, commodities are still, folks, inflation is still st here and it's sticky. And look where it's opening today. It's opening right here today. I told you about this sucker around here, right? And still, be careful. If it opens here, it's a little overdone. Wait for it to come down to this 
level here, but you guys get the point. Good, Michael. Good. That's good, George. Perfect. Perfect. FLO flow uh, flower foods. This has a nice breakout. Look at, uh, let me just expand this. Look at this breakout. We have a nice breakout here. A real nice breakout. I would like to see some follow through, but it's a nice breakout. Uh, and lastly, this is the last long stock I've got for today. Right here. Alaska Airlines. It's down today. Uh, so be careful. But if we start, if, if the market starts coming down, you may get flight to quality coming back up here. Now let's talk about the short list. Okay, ETFs that I'm bearish on right now. Biotech. Be careful. We are at the 200-day moving average. I'd prefer to see it break the 200-day real sharply, and then we can begin. But this one is doing horrible. Um, SYK. Don't be afraid to sell into weakness. We're in the gap on this one, by the way, too. Maybe maybe a good stock for... We're going to have a, a lot of good gap to green picks in the next couple of weeks. Fast. Oh, what a beauty. Z. With all their real estate stuff going on, and with interest rates being higher longer, the stock is not uh, doing well. Real estate is not doing well. I would be so upset. Las Vegas. I would be so upset at Powell if, uh, and it, because they really gave them a, a look at that. Boom. More breakdown. You got till about right here, 44. Um, he really gave the housing market a, a, a false start, if you will. Again, a biotech. I told you the biotechs are weak. We got a couple of biotechs in here. Um, True. Oh, what a stinker, huh? Uh, ASO, told you about this one about a week ago. It's been going down quite a bit. And now it's below the 200-day moving average. This is good. See, it closed below the 200-day moving average. And now, if it has more downside, a lot of funds like to sell their positions when they're at the 200-day moving average. Or, be I mean, below the 200-day moving average. Can I explain the 90-10 again? Yeah, I will. Ooh, Dollar Tree. Ooh. And Ross Store is on my list too, by the way. They are they are sort of related. Oh, they The 200 tends to be a magnet, folks. You've seen that many, many times. Uh, MNST. I almost shorted this one yesterday. The reason I didn't was because the options, options were, were too spready. But this was like on my short list yesterday, also in the gap. This close yesterday. Matt stopped me because the options weren't. Ring Central. I never really liked this stock a lot. It doesn't really mean anything, but I uh, double top, come down below the 200-day. Not much support here. Uh, three down candle. Swing high, come back. Yeah, uh, let's see here. What will be a catalyst for big money flowing into the market? I'll tell you. Well, Richard, I'll tell you that right now in a minute. TT2O, this is my last one. The next big catalyst, well, the first catalyst not responding to geopolitical tension, which we're seeing right now. We're not nearly responding as much. When earnings turn around, earnings right now, the catalyst is earnings. Earnings have been bad. They haven't been good. Uh, I mean, I, do you guys remember the last time Netflix dumped uh, on earnings? I mean, dumped uh, Taiwan Semiconductors, AI, that's an AI stock. So um, I think I I think I think the next I think we need to see earnings turn around and we need this global tension to to relief and the Fed to change their tune. But I do believe we're going to have a bounce, a good bounce in the market. If I didn't, I wouldn't be putting on, I wouldn't be rolling Microsoft today for weekly cash flow, because if it goes down, then so I, I do think we're going to see some upside. Um, the 90-10, yes, let me show you the 90-10. It's really simple and it works great. And there's also a four by four, which is like a shallower version of it. So, okay, so let me first, very, very quickly. So let's look at the SPY. A lot of poor earnings. 
okay, so let's say the market makes a 90-day high and then comes down and makes a 10-day low and then closes up in the in the upper end of the range like this, okay? You're going to have stocks that are doing similar. Right now, we're in the middle of the range, so there aren't any. But uh, let's go. Let's go back a few days. Okay, so let's go here. So look at all of these stocks. L look at at the level right here before this blue started, because that's when the setup happened. Ninety-day high, ten-day low. Ninety-day high, ten-day low. Ninety-day high, ten-day low. So ninety-day high. 10 day low trading days not calendar days and then the 10th day has to the 10th day the stock has to close has to break the low make a 10 day low and then has to close in the upper end of the range basically telling us that we're going to we're going to have a shakeout so right now we, we don't have any 10 day lows or 10 day highs because the markets are doing this but when they have uh 40 50 10 day lows uh you will you will start seeing it and another variation of that is the 4 by 4 and I've been using these two. When I started Market Geeks in 2012, November of or October of 2012, those were the first two strategies that I ever showed people: the four by four and the 90/10. So to say that I've been using these for a long time would be an understatement. The four by four high and the four by four low. And here you could see right here, we make a 40-day high and we make a four-day low or a three-day low, and the fourth day it starts coming up. High, down, three down days, coming back up like this, like a spoof, all right? All right, guys, remember, I'm going to be in, in a VIP room today at 11 a.m. I'll be in customer service live at noon with Cam, and uh, Graham is going to be doing his, uh, his uh, Bitcoin spiel today at noon as well. I thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're in the weekly cash flow, please keep your eye on the Telegram channel. I'll send a, a note when the alert comes on. I'm going to be rolling Microsoft today. There's no question about that. So um, that's what we're going to be doing, probably buying about three weeks worth of time. So we have another three weeks to see if the market rallies. If the market rallies, we'll keep the majority of the premium, okay? If I miss something, if I didn't answer any question for you guys, uh, and by the way, I'll be in, um, uh, what's that program they have on Fridays? Uh Hold on a second. There's another program I'll be in today. In uh, with Nate, ask the pros. I'll be in ask the pros with Jeff and Nate at two p.m. I will see you guys later. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and have a fantastic weekend. Any questions? Let me know. I'm here for you. I try to do the best that I can. Sometimes it works. Most of the time it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Bye, guys. Have a great day. Thank you all for the support.